Paranorm podcast contains content that might not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. This is Paranorm Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome back to Paranorm, the podcast where we chat all things true crime and paranormal. I'm Emily. I'm Sierra. And this week we are talking about Idaho's, I feel like that's how you say it, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Idaho's, <laughs> like his, the, yeah. the belonging to the state. <laughs> and maybe the country's first serial killer, IDK, it's a uh, first female, excuse me, first female uh-huh. serial killer. Um, it's highly debatable, okay. um, and I don't really feel like debating it, so... We're just gonna go with it for now. Don't argue with me. I'm in a mood. Um, <laughs> before I get into it, though, before I argue with myself about it, oh. how the fuck are you, Sierra? How are we? Like, what's, what's going on? I mean, I know that you just spilled a very large glass of water <laughs> all over everything, well, but... Well, at least it was just water, yeah. so there's that. I feel that. like we've had a pretty good day, though. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We um, went to the South largest antique mall slash the East Coast largest antique mall to find Sierra a chair. Um, we did not find a chair. We found one postcard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oops, there were sorry. a lot of cool things, but like either one, it was like too expensive. Yeah. Or two, like it's cool, but we don't need it. Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a lot of like, oh my God, I want this so bad. But like Sierra would give me this look like, where the fuck would you put it? And then I would reevaluate my life. Um, so yeah. Like the circle K sign. Like, what Oh, are we the circle do? K sign was so cute. Or those it, like yeah. bronzed um, containers. Uh-huh. You guys have no idea what we're talking about, but there's like these bronze um, containers like that you put like rice and stuff mm-hmm. in. There, there was also some weird stuff, like a giant container for raisins, and I don't understand why anybody needs that many raisins. Like, like it was bigger than the sugar container. It was, and the rice container. And, like, what? It was massive, and I don't understand why anybody would like, need that many. Like, I can't even get raisins out of the tiny boxes, let alone the giant <laughs> jar. Yeah, it could just become, like, a big <laughs> mass of things. Ew. That would be so fucking gross. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean... Uh, to me, personally, like, raisins are okay. I cannot remember the last time I ate a raisin. Um, it's not, like, a common food you just, like, find. No. And I don't I don't remember if I enjoy eating them gotcha. or not. I did have a hot dog today, and I've been complaining about how much I want a hot dog. <laughs> and Sierra bought me one, so that was pretty great. Let's see. Oh, so we pass, we when we go places, um, I am very, very uh, vocal about how much I do not want to drive on the highway, even <laughs> when I'm not the one driving. So we take the scenic route and um, we pass by this church today mm-hmm. um, that, <laughs> that Sierra thought was called Military Church. <laughs> and it was not. It was Multiply, uh, the Multiply Church or something yeah, like that. And yeah. um, then w- earlier in the week, we were, I was watching this show called The Good Doctor, and this person on the show was wearing a shirt that said, the future is female, and Sierra thought it said, the future is small. In my defense, <laughs> it did, I couldn't see all the letters at once, and then there was a baby, and I just like connected small and <laughs> the word, M-A-L, and I was like, oh. How ironic is it that he has a shirt that says the future is small and he's giving CPR to a baby? (laughs) So now in my head, I've created this whole fake, the military church, the future is small. (laughs) Oh, like that's you what know, I created. You have make them like a logo with their slogan. And, <laughs> oh but God. yeah, that's that's the that's right where my brain <laughs> is at right now. Um, but yeah, I feel like everything else this week has been good. I got my boot off. Yay! So Thank that's goodness. pretty great. However, it's still having like some issues moving around because my hip. Um, I'm a 90 year old woman, guys. Mm-hmm. Remember. Um. So yeah, that that was pretty fun. Sierra's had to pick me up out of the floor once this week, twice. Probably. Mm, I don't know. It, it, it was fun. It's fine. I'm fine. It's great. <laughs> really not. I really, I tried to drive like the moment. Okay. I love to drive. 
like I I have serious road rage so like I feel like I need to get it out of my system <laughs> and um that's like my moment to shine is when I'm driving and I can yell at other people um and they most of the time can't hear me <laughs> most of the time so can you like bark out the window <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. you can't just say that and give no context sure you can. okay it's back in one of the episodes before so if you listen to it earlier is episode, it yeah is it okay yeah it's one in one of those earlier episodes yeah, just go go figure that out um but anyway so i like the moment i got my boot off i was like i'm gonna drive and i made sierra come to the front of the building to pick me up and we switched and i got like five minutes down the road and i was like i'm in too much pain take over so we did a very very slow motion tiny fire drill like the slowest um so yeah that was that's pretty great um you've been good though yeah um, i always ask you how you are and then i tell them how you are for you this is true this is this Mm -hmm. is how we live our life and i feel terrible yeah i don't really have anything i mean um you've been painting away uh (laughs) We got a we, we the reason we were looking for a chair is because we got this desk slash table that we made it is going to be a desk. It was a desk. It's definitely a desk. It was okay. either um it can be either a sofa table or not a sofa table a console table like at the mm-hmm. entrance way or it can be a desk. And Sierra's using it for her desk, and so I painted the top of it. Well, I painted the whole thing. The it's two different colors. Um, but I've now painted our coffee table, Emmett's fish tank stand. Um, I'm in the middle of painting our dining room chairs again. And mm-hmm. all of these things I have already painted once, just FYI. <laughs> well, not Emmett's thing. Yes, and I have already painted that once. You painted it? Yeah, I had to uh, like cover up some of the spots when I first got it. And oh. yeah, I've already, I've already refinished that bitch once. <laughs> okay. I did so, not know that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think we got any plans this week that we need to update you guys on. Oh yeah. The, yeah, uh, yeah. One of, um, Sierra's lovely coworkers found out that I like plants and she gave me an aloe vera plant, which mm-hmm. I'm, it's being quarantined right now just to make sure it doesn't have any bugs or anything like that. Um, because I don't want to kill any more plants. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it will be transplanted tomorrow. I don't think I have a name for it yet. No, not yet. No. Okay. I haven't, I haven't gotten emotionally attached to it yeah. quite yet. So everybody else is doing good though. Um, yeah. All right. You ready? Right. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So we're going to get like right into this. Okay. Um, l- I think her name is Lida. It's L Y D A. I feel like it's mm. it's it's not like Le- Lydia, right? So Lida, okay. All I'm right, we're gonna that. go with it. Okay, yeah. her name is Lida Anna May Trueblood, or um, she's also known as Lida Southzard. Um, she was born on October sixteenth, eighteen ninety two. Which, guys, on our, our scenic drive today, we passed by a church that was founded in seventeen thirty eight. And the present church building was built in what, 1890 something? Yeah. It was Which like is around wild. the 1900s, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to this. Um, do, do, do. She was born in Key, Keytesville, Missouri. And uh, the True Blood family um, actually like moved from Missouri to Twin Falls, Idaho in 1906. Uh, lit- okay. Here, here's my problem. She also has another, like, she goes by Lydia, mm-hmm. but she also goes by Lida. So she goes by, like, her regular name and then... Yeah. Also Lydia. Yeah. So it's, like, it's interchanged a bunch. Okay. So if you guys hear me jumping back and forth, this is why. Lida. Lydia. Yes. Lida and Lydia are the same person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so not two twins. Not two twins. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's either Lydia or Lida. Um, anyway, she was less than remarkable in her appearance. Like, I'll, I'll obviously put pictures on mm-hmm. the blog and the Instagram, um, but she's not like drop dead gorgeous or anything like that. And she's not like, oh, wow, that's a very uh, nice looking lady. And I can say rude things about her and you will find out why. Okay. I have no I have no qualms about them <laughs> saying negative things about this woman's appearance. Um do, do, do. so she like something about her though, she seemed to capture the attention of men, like multiple men, 
At the age of 19, she was married to one such man, Idaho landowner Robert C. Dooley. The happy couple had a baby girl who they named Lorraine or Lori Ann. This is why I was asking you earlier. Uh, okay. Because in some reports, it's Lorraine, and then in other reports, it's Lori Ann. People don't know if, they, if their names have eyes or no eyes. Exactly. And I'm just like, can you guys give me one fucking name that's not something else, please? <laughs> so, anyway, the all seemed well in the family. Um, they lived with Robert's brother, Edward, until 19, uh, 1915. No. Okay. Let me, let me start that all over. Um, all seemed well with the family. They lived with Robert's brother, Edward, until 1915, when tragedy seemed to repeatedly strike Lida's life. One day, Edward, the brother, mm -hmm. um, became ill. Within a few hours, he was dead. Um, Lydia explained that he had eaten salmon from a can that had stood open for some time. And Lydia and Robert, which is the husband, accompanied the body back to Keith. Kittisville, Missouri, for burial, and folks in the like in the hometown got mm -hmm. a look of like the baby, um, which this is when she's referred to as Lori Ann. Mm. Okay. So, um, about three weeks after Lydia and her husband returned to Twin Falls, Robert died. Lydia said that he had insisted on drinking from a cistern that was close to the barn, and that he had died of typhoid fever. Uh, Lydia cashed in on her late, uh, late husband's and her late brother-in-law's insurance policy, which totaled $4,600. Mm, wow. Yeah. Um, at the Times, neighbors said she expressed the fear to them that their baby, too, would die of typhoid fever. And less than three weeks later, she did die. And it was ruled as typhoid. Whoa. Yeah. Not her kid, but the, the neighbor's kid, right? Nope. Oh, she, okay. Lydia's kid. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So Lydia then cashed in on her late husband's and then her brother-in-law's mm -hmm. um, insurance policy, which was $4,600. Uh, within two years, Lydia came, like, overcame her grief and married William G. McCaffle, which is a very strange name. I don't know why. It sounds like a weird, I, I, know I always do this, but, like, it sounds like a weird restaurant. Mm. McCaffle's. Mm. It's like Waffle House. And McDonald's combined. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's kind of cringy. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine their sanitation <laughs> score? <laughs> and I love Waffle House. Like, I like no dissing the Waffle House because I, I love me some awful waffle. But, like, I could not imagine a Waffle House and a McDonald's. No. That sounds like a very scary thought. Okay, moving anyway, on. Anyway, they moved from, like, uh, Idaho, from, like, no, they actually moved from Idaho <laughs> um, to his home in Montana, but within a year and a half, the unlucky widow suffered another loss. On October 1st, 1918, McCaffle died from what was thought to be complications of inf influenza and diphtheria, so Lydia then cashed in on her husband's insurance policy. Total of $500. But Lydia had a way of bouncing back from her grief, you know. Mm -hmm. She's only 25 at this point. She's been married twice. She's got a long life to live yet. Yeah, um, twice widowed, like I said. And she met yet another man. Uh, his name was Harlan C. Lewis, an automotive engineer from Billings, Montana. Isn't that where you were born? No. No? Where were you born? Great Falls. Great Falls, okay. Um, in March 19... I don't use that on any of my security questions. <laughs> I love how you have to clarify that. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. All right. Anyway, in March 1919, she became Miss Harlan C. Lewis. However, within four months, well, Lewis was dead from complications of gastroenteritis. Mm, all the things complications. Huh? Yeah. Lydia cashed in on her late husband's insurance policy of a total of $3,000. That second one was not doing great. No. We only had no, 500. 500. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> 10 grand at least, at the minimum, <laughs> at this fucking point, my dude. Um, anyway, all right. So, Lydia managed to get over the loss fairly quickly, um, as in the past, and it was not long before the 27 year old widower, three times over, met and married Edward F. Meyer, a ranch foreman from Pocatello, Pocatello, Idaho. 
uh, on August 10th, which is my dad's birthday, mm. or my, or, or Wendy's birthday. I don't really remember, because if one's the 9th, and one's the 10th, and I don't know which one's which. So, um, on August 10th, 1920, they wed. Edward only survived the marriage for one month. Okay, timeline is increasing <laughs> here, people. <laughs> Dying after contracting typhoid. No way. Yep. Lydia cashed in on her late husband's insurance policy of a total of $10,000. Wow. So she's increasing. Right. Well, yeah. Well, sort of kind of not 500, really. But yeah. All right. Anyway, so friends and relatives were pretty much upset by the tra- tragedy of uh, Lydia's latest marriage. Mm-hmm. To them, it, did quote, didn't seem right uh, in, that one woman should lose four husbands one after another, and a daughter and a brother-in-law mm-hmm. to boot that. Um, now, back in Twin Falls, chemist Earl Dooley, which was a relative of Lida's first husband, mm-hmm. um, began to study the death surrounding her, along with physician and another chemist, which is like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you have like a, like two phys- no two chemists and a phys- uh, physicists just chilling in the middle of nowhere, Montana? I don't know. Either way. Like, that's, that's strange, right? How do you get there and why are you, like, right? how do you have jobs there? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, so along with the um, physicist and the other chemist, he soon discovered that Ed and Bob Dooley, which is Robert, mm. um, they call him Bob as well. See, oh, nobody okay. has one fucking name Jeez. in this story. <laughs> um, the original. Yes. They were murdered by arsenic poisoning. Oh. Yeah. Twin Falls County prosecu- prosecutor Frank S- oh God. Twin call Twin calls oh yeah Twin Falls County prosecutor Frank Stephan began inve- began an investigation and began to exhume the bodies of three of Lida's husbands mm-hmm. uh, Lida's three year old daughter and Lida's brother in law mm-hmm. So, Stefan discovered that some of the bodies contained traces of arsenic, while others were suspected of arsenic poisoning by how well the bodies were preserved and found her motive in records of the Idaho State Life Insurance policies. Like, he's catching on. Mm Mm-hmm. All four of Lida's husbands had held a life insurance policy where they listed her as the sole beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Lida Trueblood was able to collect over $7,000 over the years from the deaths of her first three husbands, Mm -hmm. which at the time, $7,000... This is still a lot. ...is hella money. Yeah, because it was, well, because it was, what, 43 and 500 and 3,000. 46. Oh, yeah, 46, 500, and 3,000. Yeah. And then not including the 10,000 that happened like two years after so the last one. Yeah, 8,100 8, and then 10,000. So. Yeah, that's, that's a lot Almost of fucking money. $20,000. Yeah, for those times. Yeah. So, like, not even accounting for I like mean, inflation I'll now. But, oh yeah. my God, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I have some very hefty stuff, student loans that are just chilling in the corner. <laughs> um, anyway, so she. By the time they, like, all had figured this out, Lida is the f- hell out of fucking Dodge at of this course, point. Yes. Yeah. She was found by law enforcement in Honolulu. Honolulu? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'll get there. Okay. Married for the fifth time to a Navy petty, petty officer, Paul Southard. Uh, Lydia moved to California and married her fifth husband, mm-hmm. Paul. She attempted to convince him to take out a large insurance policy of ten grand, like she did with the last one. Mm-hmm. But since he was covered by the U.S. military, he mm-hmm. refused. Following extradition to Idaho, she was arraigned on June 11, 1921. Following a six-week trial, she was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to ten years and uh, to like life in mm-hmm. prison she was only convicted of killing one of her husbands i don't remember which one and i forgot to write it down so you're welcome oh well still <laughs> yeah like three of the three what? yeah and the brother-in-law too yeah and the daughter yeah so what's up with that but right um, so here's, here's the little kicker. Okay. Um, she escaped from prison on May 4th. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On May 4th. Is it like one of those women's correctional, 
like facility? No, it's like an actual prison. Oh, okay. Like prison prison. Okay. Old, old Idaho State Penitentiary. I looked this bitch up. Okay. She's intimidating. Okay. Yeah. All right. So on May 4th, 1931, she escaped and took up residence in Denver, Colorado as a housekeeper for Harry Whitlock. Whitlock? Oh, jeez. Whitlock? I don't know. A man she married on March uh, 19th, 1932. Yeah. We're going to go with that. Okay. I, I may have mistyped that, but it was March 19, uh, 1932. I know that much for sure. Okay. She climbed a crude ladder and escaped. This is how she escaped. Oh, um, okay. She climbed a, like, a handmade ladder mm-hmm. and escaped over the walls of the prison. She had pried a bar from her cell window while her fellow prisoners sang and played phonograph music to drown out the grating noise. Wow. Yeah. So, of course, Lida had her, el- uh, like, her outside help, because mm-hmm. you can't just escape prison without outside help. Right. Um, and it was a moonstruck man, of course. What the heck? How did they even... I don't know. I'm going to show you a picture of this lady in a moment, and I need you to just, like, validate yeah. the point, like, what is happening? She, he was moonstruck before she went to prison, I guess. I, I don't know. And then helped I mean, her I don't know the conjugal visit, lo- like, laws of the time. So, so, like, how would you even, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's and very... you know that she is convicted of killing someone who she was married to. Yeah. So, like. Yeah, like, why Why the fuck would you get with this lady? Yeah. This is what she looks like. So. Nothing special. Real crazy. Yeah. She like looks crazy. Like, nothing special about her. Just regular homegirl, you know? I don't know, man. Okay, anyway, so her, like, her helper, her, her moonstruck mm-hmm. man, was a man named David Minton, paroled from the men's prison only three weeks before. Oh. Wow. They so met like, on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they met. I would like yeah, to know how know. they met, but I do not know how they met. So, with Elida gone, Warden R.E. Thomas conducted an investigation. He found that Minton had visited Lida's, like, Lida's ward in the mm-hmm. women's uh, prison two nights before the escape, and that he had tossed many love notes to her over the wall. So, I guess they had met, like, mm-hmm. in the yard or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know prison slang. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the nation's police searched for Lida and Mitten. Mm-hmm. They found him in Denver, Colorado on July 2nd, 1932. He was bitter that Lida had jilted him because mm-hmm. she moved on with yep. um, Harry. Yeah. So, he was, like, fucking 100% positive that he knew where she was. Yeah. And he would gladly fucking tell them <laughs> where she was. On Mitten's information, police found Lida in Topeka, Kansas, 28 days later. Uh, she didn't look quite the same, though. Her brown hair had been dyed black. Her two front teeth had been replaced by gold ones. Gross. In spite of this attempt to disguise herself, she said, quote, I expected to be caught. So, yeah. Um, all right. Yep. Um, but... She was returned, so she was she was captured, and mm-hmm. she was returned to the penitentiary on like in August 1932. Mm-hmm. So like, not not she wasn't gone that long. No, um, when Lida was returned to Idaho to face the uh, the murder charges on Meyer, she pled not guilty in court, but ultimately was convicted of using arsenic to murder her husbands, and then taking the insurance money. Mm-hmm. So she was only convic- uh, convicted on Meyer's mm-hmm. murder, though. Um, she was sentenced to 10 years to life in Idaho prison. It was determined that her motive was for money because duh. Yeah. Um, since she had taken out and collected all of the life insurance policies on these people, um, including the death of her daughter, because they found out that she did have a life insurance policy on her daughter as well. Oh, okay. So you think like all of this would be the end? Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Now this little bit would be like, you know, it it would be fine by itself. Like, it wouldn't mm-hmm. be that big. But, like, all this other shit that this woman's done, it's just like, of course this happens, too. <laughs> so, at the, it was at the end that Lida wasn't, you know, having the best time in prison. Mm. Well, I mean. It's prison. 
right? So, in 1933, an expose of prison conditions revealed that Lida had received extraordinary favors. She had been allowed to visit her sick mother out of prison and had been left unguarded for five hours. Yeah. What? Why? Yeah. She had been given automobile rides and permitted all-day outings at nearby resorts. She had been allowed to attend picture shows in Boise. Is it Boise or Boise? Mm, okay, Boise. Boise. She was released on probation in October 1941 and received a part, a final pardon in 1942. Yeah. At the end of this all, because of all of her wonderful special treatment, um, the warden of the prison resigned when this whole expose was... You think he was one of her people? Oh, God, yeah. Like, what the heck? Right? So, this all comes to an end, and Lida died of a heart attack on February 5th, 1958 in Salt Lake City, Utah. Her body was interred to Sunset Memorial Park in Twin Falls, Idaho. Which, if I was Twin Falls, I would not want this bitch in my town. Oh, that was a whirlwind. I told you! This lady is fucking crazy! And, like, I love me some Black Widows. I love uh, female serial killers. Sierra has gotten me an entire coloring book of just female serial killers. Like, but this lady. But just because, like, they are given such wildly different, like, rules. Like, such Mm -hmm. wildly different rules apply to them. Like, so many of them get away with it because Mm -hmm. of the fact that they're women. Yeah. It's like, oh, they could never. Right. And this lady's not even cute. Yeah. It's like husband after husband after husband. And then she's convincing them that she could steal, like, that they should take out all this money, like, as a life insurance policy. Oh, nothing's going to happen. You're going to end up dead, motherfucker. Why do you, why you want life? If nothing's going to happen to them, why do you need life insurance? Exactly. Like, I get being prepared and all that shit, but, like, she's, like, 25. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, unless she... Convince them they have, like, dangerous professions or something like that. Like, you don't... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I didn't, it, it didn't say, like, what they were or what they well, did. yeah, one but... of them was, like, a, an engineer and one of them was, like, oh, an yeah. automobile guy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't true. remember. I'm super great at this. Yeah. But, I mean, if she can get them to, like, marry her, then she probably has... She's probably really good at convincing them to do other things. Right. If she convinces them that she's worthy of being married. Which, like, marriage is, like, a terrible idea to begin with, but, like, go for it. Sierra knows my feelings But I just on this. feel like, you know, things like that would get around. Like, especially if you, like, you stay in the same area. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, wouldn't they be cautious, more cautious of marrying this woman if, like, three of her other fucking husbands wind up dead? Her daughter and her brother-in-law? Like, I mean, after the, you know, the first one, okay, I could see the second one, like, Oh, being like, oh, bless her well, heart. That, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. things happen. And but I'm saying by, like, number three, yeah. number four, that's the point where I'm like, this bitch is straight up murdering these dudes. Oh, right, and, like, she obviously makes them feel so special. Like, I would never do that to you. Like, you're different and all that stuff. Like, But, like, like do people... you think they knew, like, the full extent, though? Like, do you think they were like, oh, this lady straight up murdered her other husband? Mm. Or do you think they're just so dumb they don't? Definitely not number two. Definitely not. No, I think number two was completely in the dark. And um, number three, I feel like that was the one that um, was farther away. No, the second one was farther away. No, she met him in Idaho, but then they moved to Montana. Yeah. Um, I feel like when she, the one in California, that one was pretty. Yeah. And then they moved to Honolulu. But, yeah, because I don't know how, like, widespread, like, news about well, it would have been. it was, been. like, the 1900s, so not yeah, very so widespread. Nine, yeah, even if the um, newspapers carried it, they probably didn't It wasn't very probably, far. like, national news or yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. So, I could understand that. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, and people are delusional. And they, like, want to believe that they are smart enough to know that, you know, she would never do that to them. Like, yeah. they're different. Yeah. And they're smart enough to know, like, if she's trying to kill them or whatever. I mean, like, w- like four months out and you're dead already. One month out, you're dead already. Like, right, yeah. That's, that's fucking insane. Yeah. Like, I get that people didn't live, like, that extended of a lifetime. Right. But uh, this period of history. But, like... Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's just wild, my dude. 
Yeah. And I get that, you know, things did happen and medicine wasn't what it is now, but, like, three in a row. <laughs> Four in a row, for well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but, yeah. All right. That's my case for this week. Um, I also thought it was very interesting that she thought, she was like, I figured you'd catch me. I was just trying to have as much fun as I could before. <laughs> yeah, let me get Basically. my two fucking gold teeth in before. <laughs> right. <laughs> Does that help you? Like, <laughs> oh, what? God, no. Like, she just wanted to live life of luxury by herself. Like, yeah. And just have a harem, but that, you know, or something. A what? Harem. What is that? Like, just, like, um. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got flustered about it. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, you know, the, it's usually like, kings or whatever will have like a harem of, of con- like concubines or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I feel so. dumb. No, you're fine. Oh, I know I'm fine, but I feel <laughs> dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what she wanted, but she could only get... Oh, yeah, she, she could just only wanted do, like, a, like a plaything. Yeah, she could only do marriage because that's what they did mostly back yeah, then. Yeah. So um, she had to do that in order to get the rest, but yeah. She could have been like... Um, Evelyn Dick and just had like the um, uh, escort thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. I really, I really I mean, love my was, Black Widow that cases. That was a little bit later, obviously. Yeah, but um, I really love the Black Widow cases. They bring me so I much joy. I wonder if um, Evelyn. Well, probably not, because that was more. It's in Canada too. Yeah, that's in Canada, and it was like it was. At the end of her lifetime, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, that was interesting. I wonder how many more, how many like more women did that? Oh, a lot. Than that, than that we than that we know of. Oh, probably a lot because I'm saying like they, the legal system had like different, like like a, like social rules right for this, you know. Mm-hmm. So well, even um. Evelyn, like, she was let out. Yeah. Um, in, but she only served, like, a, a very small portion of her sentence yeah. as well. Then she was put on, then she was let out, and then she was pardoned. So, mm-hmm. like, it was a That's very... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just, it's just wild to me. Yeah. That, that whole little, like, little crime, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Crime blob. That's the word I'm going to use for the <laughs> moment. Um, it's just it's just very very interesting. Like the the whole Black Widow process mm-hmm. is very interesting. Yeah. But yeah. So that's that's what I have for you guys. Um, we are still killing it with you all. Like <laughs> every single time I log in to like look at all of our stuff. I'm sorry. I thought I just saw a bug. Anyway, um, I anytime I log in to look at like the stats or anything like that, I'm just so excited. We just got. A new state, mm-hmm. which um, we got two, two new states. Yeah. We got Utah, yeah, and we got Montana. Yep. So we we're fucking killing it this week. Yeah. Um, but that was pretty cool. Uh, we still we have almost the entire South. Yes. Except for Kentucky. Yeah, holding out on us, man. Yeah, like guys, come on. Like, um, you are the fried chicken. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> if you guys don't know, I need you to guys to like Google it. But it's like a little chef on the map of the United States, and he holds the chicken, and Tennessee is the pan, and Kentucky is the chicken, which I find is so. It just brings me so much joy. Like I, I get Kentucky fried. Chicken. Yeah, it just brings <laughs> me so much joy. And like, just Google chef on the United States map, and you guys will see what I'm talking about. Because like, it's like he has like a chef hat. And like his face looks like a face. He's got boots. Louisiana's the boots, obviously. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you guys need to look this up because it's so funny. But Kentucky, if you guys know somebody in Kentucky, that would be like, oh, let's listen to these gals. I swear to God, just like, please scream at them. <laughs> um, like, why have you not already? <laughs> yeah. Um. So tell them, tell them all the things. Plug all of the things. But well, hold on. Should I? Should I say? Should I say it one more time? Thank uh, you guys so much for listening. Yeah. You bring me so much joy. Like you have no idea. <laughs> you really don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. There's always. I always get like a little update. Of, yes. Like how we're doing and. 
if we got any states and what yeah. states yeah we if had. we got any new countries mm-hmm. which we got australia the other day which yeah. is really cool we got some more in the uk which mm-hmm. is really cool you guys are hanging in there strong yes every time i log on and like oh there's more people in the uk <laughs> what that's yeah. so wild to me yeah. um considering i've i've only been as far as maine at this point yeah um so that's just wild for me to grasp we canada's killing it like Guys, I, you have no idea. I'm <laughs> so pumped. I'm so, so pumped. Thank you guys so much for listening. It's just, it's so wild. Yeah. All right. Plug all the things. All right. For reels this time. <laughs> so on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook, Paranormal Podcast. Uh, we post all the pictures from for the cases. Um, so you'll be able to see our Lydia Lida person on God there. God bless America. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so we have pictures of the cases on there, and then also like relevant, interesting, funny memes that Emily finds. Yes, and, and I've been spending a lot of time on the Instagram. Like my screen time has gone way up, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Um, <laughs> so we have our website that has the blog on it, and you can see the pictures there as well. You can contact us through our website. We have like a little contact thing. And do we say our sources are on there as well? Our sources are always on the blog. Yes. Like, always. Like, you can... Yeah, that's where you can find them. Their sources are in, on there. And then um, underneath the sources are, like, personal resources if you should need them. Um, and that's not in any way, like, connected to us or anything. Yeah, no, so, no, like, no. if you use them, then that, that just goes to whatever and source you're using. And believe me, talking to someone does wonders. My therapist is so wonderful. She's so, <laughs> so kind. Um, so, yeah, talking to someone really does make a difference. I've been meditating, which is not like me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Sit still? What? Yeah, sit so <laughs> Be quiet? Yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Continue. Um, contact us. Resources. Sources. Um, you, or you can send us a direct email. Yeah, do it. Paranormalpodcast at gmail.com. And we have a Patreon page. Um, Which I am going to be revamping sometime in the near future. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, get on there. Check out the cool stuff because there will be more cool stuff coming. Let us know what kinds of things you would like to be on there. Yeah, definitely. We're not going to tell you what's on there right now. You just have to go check it out for yourselves. But, like, if you look at it and you're like, I wish you guys had such and such. Such and such, yeah. Let us know because um, we're all about trying to, you know. Yes. We're up to the challenge of making new things. <laughs> okay, or... I wouldn't say we're up to the challenge because I do not like being challenged. It's just okay. I'm up for it. <laughs> um, she'll she'll pester me into doing it, so it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. But yeah, so we would love to hear um, what kinds of things you guys would be interested in um, in getting on there. And, and then so. and then the PO box. I'm not gonna say it because I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> the so paranormal podcast Avi. <laughs> There's my slang. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Yay. We were talking about slang earlier, and Sierra was talking about that since she's 30 now, she feels, like, disconnected from, like, the youth's slang. And, yeah. like, I don't use slang that much. Like, I use obby because I think it's hilarious, and I don't think it, <laughs> it just, it makes me giggle. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so the P.O. Box, it's P.O. Bo- well, the address is P.O. Box 1416. Monroe, North Carolina, two eight one one one. So three ones. Three ones. So yeah, send three us ones? something. Yeah, yeah, three ones. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. every time she tells us this um, <laughs> PO box, uh, it's like hearing it for the first time for me. So <laughs> literally, I I have to go in and like get the mail from yeah, the box because I have no idea which one it is. <laughs> like it, it, it's right there. Uh, that's fine. This is like every fucking week when we record. Every yeah. every week without fail, I'll turn to Sierra and be like, "What's the password to the iPad?" <laughs> Still the same. <laughs> I was I I had the right numbers today. Yes, I at least had the correct there numbers. There is progress on that. Front. Uh, they were not in the right order. Um, or the right amount. Or the right amount. Um, there's there's four mm-hmm. and I had three but it, it was close it was very close um but yeah so one I, step at a time. I hope you guys have a great week we will not be back next week probably right um so yeah I'm not gonna say happy valentine's day because I Blech. fucking hate that holiday it's not real um, go get the discount candy afterwards on the 15th that's a national holiday it should be um it's not a real holiday it like 
no holidays are real, basically, but like well, yeah. Valentine's Day especially is a made up holiday by uh, greeting card companies and big businesses. So now you know my small, feelings on that. Support small business. Yes, do it. Um, I dare you. But support us. <laughs> <laughs> We're a small business. Yeah, we are. I wrote it off on my taxes. <laughs> Even though they got fucked up. Oh, uh, wow. Well, um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you guys have a good uh, February 15th where you get discounted candy. Do it. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.